Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. We're continuing on with our 30 roses, 30 minute roses, 30 of them in 30 days. And I've got a lot of emails from you and a lot of comments on both our YouTube and into our, our, our own homework, our own home network, if I can get that out, over on Jansen Art Online. Thank you so much. I'm trying to catch up on them. The uh, This morning I woke up, turned on the computer, there was a 126 comments and uh, um, 84 emails so it takes me a little bit to get through some of them but I'm trying to get through some of them so keep them coming because we're enjoying it so much okay we're going to concentrate now back uh, and continue some of our studies here of movement into the roses trying a few different shapes after we get this movement all done what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to change up some of the roses, change up some of their internal structure and everything. But from what I'm seeing and everything that you're posting, it's coming along great. And some of you, and some of you are saying, hey, it's taking longer than an hour. Okay, uh, that I understand, that I understand. Part of that, though, is you're working for perfection. And I don't want you to work for perfection. I want you to work for movement. Okay, I want you to work for the movement of it and just pushing the color around. Don't worry about blending or doing any of that kind of stuff. Don't worry about it. that's that's you know we're all a little bit different, but for me I was a a perfect blender. I had to have precise edges, and only when I started letting that go did it start to really work for me. And what caused me to let it go? Timing, and that's what they use in fine art schools is timing to get you to work past those particular habits. Okay, so let it go. Don't, you know, try to keep it under that 30 minutes and phew, I'm two minutes into it. Let's get going. Okay, same thing, same board. Uh, made with a light gray. Made from white, black, touch of yellow oxide. That's my base color here. It's up around a value seven. My same basic palette I have. Hansa yellow, yellow oxide, burnt sienna, naphthol red light, pine green, uh, phthalo blue. This is cranacridone violet, uh, red violet, black, and white. These are my real cool colors my warmer colors, okay? All right, let's um, put down, we can do anything. I do have a cap of extender out here, just in case I might want to uh, have that. And I know that some of you commented on there, it looked kind of yellow in the early one. Yeah, because I had some yellow paint in it. It is, extender is absolutely clear. Le but, um, you know, it's, it's a, a fun medium to paint with. Let's do some, uh, a little bit more casual ones here and get us really working into this as we get into the halfway here. I like to put down some color uh, sometimes you know into the background just to just to start out uh, you know some of my movements and stuff that I do. I love to go into the yellows and greens and a little bit of burnt siennas just make some fun colors here and push those right in through my uh, right in through my background here and this loosens it all up this is all movement and so and I love fracturing of stuff I I like to do all different kinds of stuff and play all different kinds of edges stuff here let's uh, do uh, a setting of the roses so I broke up the background I can add a heck of a lot more of it later on back to, to my <laughs> this is my uh, number eight I should grab this one well they all have lots of paint built up onto the handles and stuff this is my number eight fusion flat here and I use extender at any time in this more to just make the color slide like I've said you know already in all the other ones I'm not a blender I never have been a blender let's try a different way of, of setting some uh, some stuff up here first um, you know before I block in like a color for the shape of a rose or something like that let's put some let's put some different movement in let's say and let's do a little bit of sketching this time try a little sketching Okay, so let's just take a small rose. Let's turn it down this way just a bit and maybe open it up down this side. And let's turn one up this way here. So we'll, we'll put it on like this. Now, what is it that makes the center of the rose? What is it that really makes a rose look like a rose? It's that center. So watch what happens with this. You don't really know what it is, but the second that I... I start to put on a center here like this. It not only gives the power of direction to the rose, and I can create a, a shadow side here like that on it as well, but it starts to make it look like a rose. So 
as you're building your rows, there's a couple of things you'd want to always preserve. That center and this bowl. These are the two real, real big elements that make it a rose. Now on this one here, let's open it up a bit more. So we'll put the center down here a little bit more. So the rose, you know, before we've always come down a third, put in the center, then go up a third, put in the bowl. This time we'll come a little bit more towards the halfway. So we'll really open up the back of the rose here like this. And then we'll drop the, the color down this way. This will be the center. Now what really makes that is that nice deep center color. So we'll push some of that in a little bit more and open that rose up just a bit. So this one will turn off that way. Now I'm going to use this. So I'm just using burnt sienna and pine green basically in all of this. Let's take some of that color right there. Let's drop on this and the stem of that one right there. Sometimes when I'm dropping on the, the, the movement, you know, through a through an element right away, I'll go ahead and build leaves and stuff like that. We can wait. We'll we'll keep this kind of kind of easy for right now. Okay. So these two roses go this way, and you can see that color that you thought was really a lot of interest didn't. You know, when it dries down, it's just a subtle break up the background a little bit. But you can do these on solid backgrounds too. There's no worry. Now let's come in. We'll do more softer yellow roses, yellow white roses here. We'll take some um, um, yellow oxide. Let's go ahead and just apply some yellow oxide. And I'm going to build the yellow oxide right up here into the front of this one a bit. So it starts to, till I see it start to uh, stand off the board. Now, what I mean by stand off the board is you see it clearly. What is most important whenever you're doing this? Movement. Okay. So if I set a color across, I'll come like this and my brush will move in the direction of the bowl. Always moving in the direction of the bowl. Don't just tap something in there because that makes the rose look flat. You'll, this tiny little brush calligraphy and stuff that you start to pick up, you will notice, the viewer's eye will notice, especially if we go to any kind of textures. So you do want to always work your brush in a way that it is showing the movement. Now, let's bring out a little more yellow right here. We'll even maybe cover up some of that uh, stem line right there. We'll see how that goes right in here. Now, this right here, when I'm in here, I see it very clearly, the bowl right there, but I've lost the bowl there. So before I go on, no matter what I'm doing or how I'm, you know, kind of finding my way through the rows, I must not lose that bowl, which is the, you know, the element, one of the main elements, the center and the bowl that are, make it a nice rose. So don't lose that like that. And you start doing that, you get your rose back, okay? So now everything is nice, light, nice and casual. If I want to make the roses more trans, this is where I start to step up and say, do I want to make the roses more transparent looking? This is where I'll go grab some of my greens, maybe some of my colors that I have here. I'm going to poke just a little extender in it just to make it slippery, not to blend. And this is where I will come in and push some of my, say, my leaves and stuff here that I want to have. Let's do one right here and one right up here like this. Okay, let them set for just a second, pull some of the color off of it, just down like that. I like how that works. Push it into the bowl just a bit. That is what, push it right into the flower and the bowl. That is what's going to give you transparency or the translucency of a petal if you want to have that. You don't have to, but you just, it's up to you. But if I, before I start really painting a lot of the flowers, I kind of decide, do I want to have any of that yet, you know? So we'll put some of that. Let's uh, get some darker color over this side. Now this is a negative painting stroke where I'm kind of shaping the outside edges of that that rose right there just with the uh, the color that I'm using there on my brush. Okay, that's called a negative a negative your negative painting. In other words, you're painting the shape of the rose negatively by the use of a background element. Here, let's come back down here. Let's just shape this up just a bit. Not sure, you know, I don't, you don't have to have a whole bunch of lead, perfect leaves. You can have just brush movements in there and that adds a lot of interest. And I really highly recommend that you start to learn how to paint more 
uh, casual brush movements like this because for those of you that were like me for many years, I had all these habits that everything had to be perfect. This is a great way to start breaking some of those habits and seeing flowers new ways. Okay, everything that I've painted here has been warm. So now I can continue the painting and continue it warm, or I can start adding the, the temperature element of a cool color. And that, you know, and sometimes I will continue painting completely warm. Sometimes I'll just take it a little bit cooler. So here's a little quinacridone violet right into some of that yellow and I'll push a little bit of coolness in here. You don't always want to paint the same. And, you know, I don't always paint roses that, of colorings that I like. I paint just all kinds of them because nature gives us, you know, hundreds of different varieties of them. And so, you know, there's a little bit of a coolness that comes in there. It's kind of pretty. I'll let that dry up just a bit. We'll uh, take some of that our yellow and our white here. Now I'll pick this up a little heavier here like this nice textured bit of it let's just strike right across the front of it there let's pick up a little bit more let's strike right across the front of it there and I'm going to push it down into the shape of the bowl here now sometimes on some roses and stuff I'm always looking for different ways I might take some yellow and push it right here next to it and create an area that I can push back and forth like this and see the mo the movement that that gives. See, I don't want to blend it too much, but it does give lots of movement to it. So if I want to come in and put the edge on this, I can restate a yellow. I can then come back up over here, restate a nice light, light color, like, like here, see the contrast I like. Then take my finger like this, instead of using the brush, which might over, you know, might might blend it too much. There's a lot of paint there too. See how much paint's there? And I'll push it into the bowl shape that I want, the movement that I want that uh, bowl to have. Don't do too much of it. See the nice subtle little movement there? And it gives you a little different look. There's just lots of different things you can play and uh, try, you know, with these with these types of techniques. Let's take a little bit of that lighter yellow and put a soft little end back out here like that and push this right around push it right around see how I'm pushing it like this pushing it like this you know uh, we painted an open rose already once so we're just going to open this rose up a little bit drop it down this side a little yellow maybe a little cool color here let that change let that change a bit there Push that up to that side, round it right into that bowl. Pull that right across like that. Let that movement come right there. Look for the movement of those colors crossing each other there. Okay, that's what makes them pretty. Let's take a nice light, little bit of extender here and some yellow. We'll come right over here to our reaching petals here. We'll drop one in, pull in towards that bowl. Pull in towards that bowl, that's big enough push it in to incorporate it right you got that we've done this we're going to do this for a few more of these uh, challenge pieces and then we're going to change the rows just a bit more up on us here but i really want to drill down on this movement see here's the bowl i'm pushing it right there into that bowl see how that just incorporates that rose okay now i can continue on Close off the top of this rose here like this. Maybe take a little lighter yellow, add a back petal like that, and just push the bowl right between the two of them. There, see, it's the bowl that really makes it more than anything else. Like that. There we go. Let's uh, come in and set this. Now, many times I would work, if I was going to set this as the queen, this is the number one, I'd work on it first. But many times, I, you know, I I will come and work a smaller rose like this first just to set it. But when I do that, I know I don't work colors that are the most contrast. So I keep them a little softer. Let's take a little yellow, a little quinacridone. Push that right on the bottom there. And then push that right there like that, right into the, ro the shape of our rose. Don't push too many times. See that nice movement? That's what we're going for. That's the movement we're looking for. I can take a little chisel edge of it. Just pick up a little bit on the edge of this fusion brush. That's what really makes it. And just set in a smaller little light petal right there like that. And push a bit of that round bowl right there. You got a beautiful little petal there. 
I can do this is the pedal edging type of technique sometimes I use it on the flat sometimes on just the corner like that but we can come back in here like this and set this nice little corner edge right here just to find that one just a bit more that's kind of nice here let's take some of our quinacridone and maybe even a little green and some of that yellow right in here let's drop a bit more of that right over here and we'll make a lighter color sometimes I pull out here like this pull out and make the soft edge of the, the lost edge of the rose over here that's kind of nice and I can redefine that with some of those greens later I want to paint this blurry area that's the thing that I want you don't need to have uh, a lot of definition okay and that's the thing that that took me for years I paint these roses painting roses and and you know I would get them too defined and if they get too defined they get too stiff looking so there was a little bit of green and some violets and stuff just to blur down soften down and blur down that area there and the more I make the under the underpainting blurry the less I have to do with the over the petals up on top so I can make a, the rose softer looking let's petal edge here this time on the corner because I want to be able to roll into the corner we'll control it going underneath into the bowl right here like this put a little color like that and pull in pull in like that and we'll push that right there right into the shape of our bowl see that's a pretty little shape it's got some nice shape right there with it you can build up a lighter petal right in here you know uh, if you want to uh, this has climbed a little bit past um, the roundness of the rose right up there so how do I get rid of that you can take any kind of light color background movement color a little bit of greens or anything and just negative paint that back down just take some color and start to work it back down here the shape of your rose so you use this is where I use a lot of backgrounding movements and techniques to to shape down and work my rose if I wanted to define that rose over here in the corner a little bit more a little bit of burnt sienna a little bit of green here just like this let's define that edge just a bit more see and I don't define everything just pull it out a little bit Let's pull this out and around that way just a bit and let's just pull a little bit of movement out here we might put a leaf or two in there like that if I feel that my rose is a little bit lost in there I'm gonna take a bit of my a little not pine green a bit of my quinacridone right here something let's let's reach into our contrast our deepest which is the red violet we'll push it right down in here into the depth of it and we'll just walk it out a bit now see look at how much that turn you know how much more that turns that into a rose just by having that other color in there and we can uh, soften this out pull those colors out and around a little bit of movement so it's not quite so dark just tap through there a little bit and the, and the rose becomes quite pretty I might put another slightly lighter petal in there in just a minute but let's go over to our main rose here and let's continue on this is nice and dry here so it's easy to work on we'll pick up some more light let's let's establish some more light now since this won't blur out we can shear it out there but it won't go too easy so what I'll do is I'll just take another lighter or cooler tone I'm going to add that right in there like that maybe I'll take a stroke of yellow and add that right in there like that see now I'm going to push it just a couple of times not too many times you will make it all one color but I want this movement see that's what makes it pretty so you take a stroke of you know two three colors and you put them there you don't make a rainbow but you can put a lot of colors together let's drop this edge into this one here so that's a back pedal push it right into the edge of that bowl there like that you can take that just hit that and it'll make it more transparent come back like that and hit it and again and again and again and again and again okay um, let's go a little deeper into that yellow with some red violet right over here 
and drop a little bit of that right over here. Since I used it in there, I'll use it into this side here. Let's take some yellow, push that right in there so I have a nice color, and then we'll put some white right here like this. We'll open up this petal a little bit more and pull that down for the bowl, just like that. Now, we'll wipe our finger, make sure it's kind of clean, and just push a couple of times to that bowl and leave that movement. See that movement, that pretty movement that you get there. If you don't do it too many times and you use lots and lots of paint, let's come out here. We'll weave these petals together, which means this one comes on top of that one, that one comes on top of here. We'll pull some just yellow and some light color. We'll get a little bit of the violets into this as I come down to this side here and we'll push it right into the bowl and in and out a bit. Wipe your fingers here. Add extender if you need to or whatever you need. I'm going to take a bit more of this light Lighten up this edge of this petal more, right here like that, so that weaves these petals of these roses. We can make that translucency come by pulling it back a bit, or we can cool this off a bit. But you can make that nice. If I push hard, I'll pick up that green right through it and make that petal of that rose a little bit more translucent there, like that. Okay, I'm gonna get a, a, a fresh paper towel, rinse my brush out just a bit. And we'll come back over to this side here. Take some light, cooler color. And let's just add some petals pulling in, like that. On that side, I'll let most of this side just kind of fall down there, like that. Okay, now, I want to open this rose up like we did in one of the previous lessons. I'm going to drop this down like this and pull down like this. So my movement, my movement here is instead of closing up like I usually close up, I'm going to open up the rows here like this with petals coming down that way. And we'll get just a touch closer here with that, right in like that and around. Okay, now what makes it real pretty, let's get a bit of our nice contrast. I should use, think about using uh, Cornacridone Violet, some because I put some into that one. Tap it in real small, work it out just a bit here, right like that. Don't get rid of all of the other colors, but look for that nice rounding, that up and around this way, and down and down. That's opening the rows up, okay? And... We'll just reset some nice lights here. Just, just thinly, thinly like this. Just reset a little bit of that movement. So it'll look like petals. It'll look like you know what you're doing if you don't do it too much, right? That's a hard thing to stop painting. Now let's continue this front so it starts to open up. Just drop it down just a bit like that. Let's give a lighter, warmer front. Nice and texture, lots of paint here. Right up into the front of this one here. Okay, and I'm gonna lose it right there because I have, it's real thick. So I'm gonna put a, a helping stroke we call half tone of some cool color right here to help the, the pushing of my bowl here, of that, of that coming down into the bowl. I need, kind of need that there. Let's take some of that light color. Let's define a nice little light right across here. You can put petals in any shapes and forms. Sometimes I look at photos and stuff to, you know, get ideas of how petals and stuff form, you know, on flowers and wipe my finger a bit on the roses and stuff. And, um, you know, so I do it all different kinds of ways. I never really copy, put out a photo and copy a rose. There are some classes I teach on that so you can learn to see the warmth and the cools and how do you change a photo of a rose into a real pretty painting? Because, you know, not all photos of roses make great paintings of roses, okay? So there's a little bit of difference there. 
And that's kind of fine and we'll leave that maybe a little bit more of an edge there like that. Maybe a, even a heavier textured light stroke of the light right up here. I want to get a nice powerful light. So see how my brush is working the shape of that bowl, see? It's working the shape of that bowl. If you get that too light, too warm out there like that, grab, take a little extender, grab some of your cool color like this and reset that coolness right there of that bowl, right there like that. So you can preserve some of that uh, movement, pedal movement there. Let's drop a light color pulling down, right into the edge of that bowl, there like that. Maybe just a touch more light. Just pick up an edge of it right here and put a little textured stroke, just bang, right down. Imagine it coming right down towards that bowl, right like that. That brings it in. All kinds of ways to do that. Makes a nice pretty rose. All right. So last couple things. We'll come back out here. And let's uh, put in a little bit more of a couple of ideas for some leaves. Do you want to have a lighter leaf out here? Let's take some yellow and some green and some light. You know, if you want to have a, a lighter leaf here like this that uh, pulls out, grab a little more yellow and some light here. Light like that. Push that in and out here. You can have them go down a little darker. Some, just some marks of them around like that. Um, all kinds of ways you see me do all kinds of different types of the the leaves and stuff. That's up to you. I'm going to add some uh, some negative ones right out over here. This really ha helps the shape of your rose here when you get some of that negative movement and stuff right out here like that. Here. So you can see when I approach the ro rose like that, not quite as much strokey as what we've done with some of the other ones. Um, the rose gets a little more fluffy through here as well. And uh, it looks a little bit different. So, you know, your build, the way in which you build makes the roses look a little bit different. Um, and there's all kinds of ways, fun ways. Let's take some of that yellow. Let's work this. Just a couple of lighter poles here in. Right like that, some of that yellow and light. Let's pull right across here just a bit more. In like that. Get some of that in, that movement in. And then I think I'm gonna call this one. There you go. Yeah, now, I, like I said though, if you wanna take some, you know, before, put a little bit of a, a light mark for a uh, stem line and stuff, those look good. You can vary your greens, add some more contrast and stuff to it. Sometimes I'll take a bit of the yellows or something like that when I'm all done like this and pull a bit of the color down like this. That looks nice. You'll see that in some of my paintings and stuff. And that always works real nice. But there's an, it's a nicer, softer effect. It's kind of fun. You know, another another kind of fun one, different way to apply it. But more than anything else, and some of you have already making the right kinds of comments on the channel and uh, especially over on our artist network that you see how much that movement is important, that movement. Don't use, don't go in there and soften it up or touch it too many times. You destroy that movement. You destroy the, the movement. You destroy the subtle little roundness of the, of the, uh, of the rose. The three circles, the inside, the bowl, and the main body of those reaching petals coming in, everything flowing in in that movement. Okay, and uh, we'll show you some other ways too. But there you go, rose number 14. Let's go over and paint 15. <laughs> 